This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Uh Uh-oh, this could be tricky for Jeep to navigate. Car and Driver reports that the Cherokee Nation tribe is asking Jeep to drop the name Cherokee. C&D quotes the principal chief of the Cherokees as saying that Jeep does not honor the tribe by, quote, plastering its name on the side of a car. And this is becoming a big thing. The Cleveland Indians baseball team announced they will change their name. And the Washington football team already announced they will stop using the Redskins name. So the pressure is on. Jeep put out a statement saying that it is, quote, committed to an open and respectful dialogue with the Cherokee tribe. And this is a bad time for Jeep. It plans to start making the all-new Grand Cherokee in August and the all-new Cherokee in October. Kia is wasting no time in expanding its military expertise. It recently displayed the light tactical cargo truck concept at an international defense exhibition. It's built on a modular chassis that allows for a standard and long wheelbase version, which can then be converted into a mobile workshop, communication hub, or troop and cargo carriers. The vehicle is powered by a 225 horsepower diesel engine and mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission that drives all four wheels. It can also be armored or unarmored and features independent suspension, limited slip differential, and run flat tires. It was a bad day on Wall Street for the EV startups with Tesla leading the downturn. Tesla is down $158 a share from the beginning of this month. Lordstown, Workhorse, Canoe, and Nikola fell, as well as Neo, Xpeng, Lee Auto, and Candy. These stocks have been on a tear for months, so it's not surprising to see a correction. But we'll have to keep an eye on this to see if it's just some profit-taking or if the market is trying to tell us something. And speaking of EVs, the new Chevy Bolt EUV will have a slightly downgraded version of GM's Super Cruise system that's available in some Cadillac models. The Bolt EUV won't be able to perform automatic lane changing, which the driver activates by tapping the turn signal. And that's because the model is built on GM's Global 8 platform, which doesn't support the feature. Vehicles built on GM's Global B architecture can support the function. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. to know what drives your testing OTA connected car diagnostics remote testing intrepid control systems is here to help you work from anywhere intrepid control systems driven by your data Hyundai unveiled the all-new, all-electric Ioniq 5, and we think it's going to be very competitive in the EV space. The midsize CUV comes standard with a rear electric motor and a 58-kilowatt-hour battery pack. While Hyundai didn't reveal the range for this setup, based on figures for the larger pack, we can estimate it will be rated around 375 kilometers or 233 miles based on the WLTP test cycle. It will also do zero to 60 in eight and a half seconds in this configuration. There's an all wheel drive setup as well with 173 kilowatts of total power, which brings that zero to 60 time down to 6.1 seconds. Moving over to that larger pack, 
Its size depends on the market where it's sold. Customers outside of North America will have access to a 72.6 kilowatt hour battery, while those in North America get a 77.4 kilowatt hour pack. Hyundai estimates the smaller 72.6 kilowatt hour pack will return between 470 and 480 kilometers or 292 to 298 miles of range. There's also an all-wheel drive option for the larger pack, but it's more powerful with 225 kilowatts of total power and will do 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. The Ionic 5 can support both 400 and 800 volt charging and in optimum conditions can charge from 10% to 80% in just 18 minutes. Now let's shift our focus to the styling, which was inspired by Hyundai's first production car, the Pony. And believe it or not, this is not a concept or prototype. It's what you will be able to buy in the dealership, including those flush mounted door handles, which helps improve aero. The same can be said of the interior. It looks like a concept, but features a minimalistic design with two large display screens. It also has cool options like reclining front seats with leg rests, a head-up display featuring augmented reality, and a large glass roof. The Ionic 5 goes on sale in the first half of this year and will be followed by a sedan called the Ionic 6 and the Ionic 7, a large SUV. In our review of the new Lexus IS, we noted that being a Lexus, it still leans towards quiet and comfort rather than raw performance. But today that changes. It revealed the all new IS 500F Sport Performance, which rocks a 472 horsepower 5 liter V8 under the hood. Paired with rear wheel drive and an 8 speed automatic transmission, the car will do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. The next most powerful version in the IS lineup is the IS350, which features a 311 horsepower 3.5 liter V6 and will do 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds. Now that you know how it stacks up, let's get to that name, the IS500 F Sport Performance. A bit of a mouthful, but F Sport Performance is a new trim that Lexus is adding to its lineup that will perform better than standard F Sport models and are distinguished by black badging. Okay, back to the IS. It comes standard with adaptive suspension and a limited slip differential, as well as add-ons like performance dampers in the rear and bigger front and rear brake rotors. With the extra goodies, the car's weight is up by 143 pounds, which isn't really a whole lot. Visual changes include a raised hood, longer bumper, wider fenders, unique 19-inch wheels, rear diffuser, quad exhaust, dark window trim, black badging, and a new startup animation in the instrument cluster. The IS500 F Sport Performance goes on sale this fall. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Borg Warner propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. Gordon Murray, the famed Formula One designer, unveiled the track version of his T50. He calls it the T50S, or more precisely, the T50S Nicky Lauda fan car. That's a tribute to F1 champion Nicky Lauda and the Brabham BT46 fan car that Gordon Murray designed for the 1978 season. It had fans at the back of the car that literally sucked the car to the track. It was so much faster than everyone else, it was banned after only two races. The T50S also has a fan, but it doesn't create a vacuum that sucks the car to the track. Instead, the fan helps pull air through the diffusers under the car to generate downforce. It's all very ingenious, but Gordon Murray makes it sound like he invented the fan car. He did not. Jim Hall came out with the Chaparral 2J and raced it in the Cam Ann series a decade before Gordon Murray showed up with his fan car. Cars are becoming more and more sophisticated, 
and will need more computing power in the future. That's why the supplier Continental is investing in Recogni, a startup based in California that's developing a new type of chip architecture for autonomous vehicles. Financial details weren't disclosed. The chips use artificial intelligence to help perform object recognition in real time. Continental says it will start producing the new chips in volume production in 2026. While this new investment won't help with the current chip shortage that's disrupting production across the entire global automotive industry, it does show that companies want to make sure they'll have a proper supply of chips in the future. So many auto shows have been canceled and rescheduled, it's hard to keep track of what's going on. In fact, we have to wonder, what is the future of auto shows? We're going to get into that topic on AutoLine After Hours when our guest will be Rod Alberts from the Detroit Auto Dealers Association. They're the ones who put on the Detroit Auto Show. But this year, they're doing a completely different kind of event. It will be held outdoors at a private motor club and they're calling it Motor Bella. Maybe this is the future of auto shows. Maybe not. But we invite you to join us this Thursday to learn what Rod has to say. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and we'll be right back here again tomorrow.